Hey, what's up guys, Glenn here, and today I'm gonna be modifying this light into a lamp with wireless charging, if you're into that. This video is sponsored by Crazy Glue. This is labeled as a reading light, and I'll modify it to fit inside of a desk lamp. You can use any light that you want, but this one had a few details that drew my interest, like the 60 onboard LEDs, two switches with three color modes, and it's USB. After I disassembled the light, I took the LED channel and marked that onto a piece of wood. The two lumber involved in this project is walnut and cherry. The length of the lamp head is approximately 20 and a half inches long. After cutting the board down on the miter saw, I decided that I wanted it to lean forward, so I then put a 15 degree miter on it. This is the cherry part for the base, which I then cut down to 6x6. My first approach was to build a frame to wrap around the light, but after carefully considering, I decided to just use a stock piece of lumber and route this in. After tracing the LED channel onto the lumber, the next stop was over at the router table. Whenever you're doing a project like this, always try a test piece first before committing to your final piece. Now to begin routing this on, I just push this down on top of the bit, let the bit cut into the wood, and then ride it down the side of the fence until it hits the stop. The router bit I use is slightly narrower than the LED track. So this means I had to do multiple passes to get the LED channel down into the slot. I then took a chisel to score up the ends of the routed section. After I carefully cut this section out, I ended up with a very tight fit which I was pretty happy with. There were no plans to add hardware in here, I wanted this to be 100% friction fit. To join the head and the base, I needed to line these up. So I'll do so by using the old nail trick to transfer the markings to both pieces. I used another piece of wood as a stop to prevent the head from twisting while trying to apply pressure. If you apply enough pressure, you'll see the dents from the nail head in both parts. And here's another tip that could be useful if executed properly. When drilling horizontal like I need to do here, you can use a wrench or anything to place on the bit and this way if it comes back towards you that means you're dropping a bit too much, if it goes forward that means you're lifting the drill too much. The challenge here for me was I needed to keep an eye on that and also on the sides to make sure I'm not going left to right. Once I got comfortably enough I was able to take that off, plus I needed the extended depth to get all the way in. And the hole I'm drilling is so that I can pass the power cable for the light all the way to the base. So by drilling a hole through the center and from the top down, I can make the two meet. Now I'll drill out the hole in the base which should align with the hole in the lamp head. The other two markings are just for the screws. The lamp will have a wireless charger built in the base which is totally optional for anyone that wants to build this light. The first step is to find a good location for the charger in the base, trace it, and then use a router to route that section out. And after you're done with your routing, be sure to test this, and test it a number of times, with the case on your phone, without the case, figure out what's the best solution. The charger I'm using is very thin, and this allowed me to put it inside of a 3 quarter inch or 19 millimeter piece of cherry. So while you're routing, make sure you count for the power cord, which is a USB cable. Before assembling, I'll sand down a section that may be hard to get to later. To brighten up the walnut and give it a new look, I'll use a walnut danish oil.
Now I place the lamp head to the side and continue to work on the base. In order to hide the splice I need to make and also the wireless charger, I need to add an additional piece to the base. Because this only needs to serve as a cover, I went very thin on that. In results to that, while cutting this, I ended up splitting this piece. It's only an eighth of an inch thick, and what a great timing for crazy glue. I was not planning on repairing anything, but with this accident, my wait time is only a few minutes. It's really awesome that I can not only show a build with this, but also display a quick and simple way to repair something. The idea behind Crazy Glue is it cures extremely fast and it bonds to many different kinds of wood. It's a great and quick solution for repairs, woodcraft projects, and woodworking projects, especially like this lamp. Now I know I mentioned repairs, but this was the first opportunity I had to put it to the test. In less than six minutes of applying the glue and wrapping tape around it to hold it, the joint was completely closed. I put a slight bend in it and it act as one, so obviously this thing is pretty solid. Now I don't want to stress the wood too much and then cause another location to crack. Now I need to join the base with the lamp head, and I'll do so by applying wood glue on the end grain of the lumber. Before gluing up the parts, I added a piece of scrap wood as a stop. I was able to reference off of that while adding a clamp and I know I'll be in the right location, while keeping everything squared. Because I'm using a fast setting glue, within minutes I was able to remove the clamps and now I can add the screws to the bottom. If you notice, I also added a piece of tape to the drip bit and this is going to be my depth indicator. Since there will be screws, I need to countersink the heads. This will be important for the piece I'll add later. To begin routing the wires through the lamp, I need to start by drilling a hole in the base of the lamp. The light that I'll be using for this project only use a three conductor wire, but we'll need five conductor to pull off this build. So this means I have to replace the wire from the light to the switch. Now you'll want to make sure that no one can pull this out. So be sure to tie a knot in it, add a zip tie, do whatever it takes, strap it down so no one can pull the cable and pull it out. To work as free as possible, I'll cut off the existing wire that goes to the LED. Then I remove the wire one by one and reconnect them as I go. Now this can get quite tedious, so I'll breeze over this and add more information in a written article. You can find that over on my website DIYcreators.com or see the link down in the video description. After replacing the wires, I can now close this up and install the light. Just be sure that your hole for the wire is big enough so that you're not pinching it. And as I mentioned in the beginning, this is all friction fit, so there are no screws here, it's just super tight. In fact, everything about this lamp is completely replaceable. So if anything fails, just replace it. To power up the wireless charger, you'll need a USB cable that fits into the charger. You then need to cut that and strip the jacket. Then cut away the shield and the green and white wire. All you need is the red and black. I then remove the cover for the switch to expose all the connection points. And without pinpointing everything I'm doing here, I'll just explain what I'm doing so you have a general idea. The cable that came with the LED light only had three conductors in it. So I replaced that with a six conductor wire. I resolder each wire from the light to the switch, wire for wire, which was the red, black, and white. That took care of the light, but I still needed to address the wireless charger. From the 6 conductor, I used a green and a yellow to extend the power for the USB. I used the light color yellow for the red and the dark color green for the black. Back at the switch, I connected the green and the yellow directly to the power source. This way the wireless charger has constant power. If you want to get a better visual of this, be sure to check out the written article down below. I also dabbed a little bit of hot glue on here for added security. This is also a good time to go ahead and double check to make sure that everything works before you continue. Placing the bottom piece here will let me know where I need to put the hot glue so I can access it later in the occasion of a failed part. To eliminate extensive wait time, I use crazy glue wood glue to attach the bottom. I even waste a little bit here by not marking off the section where it should be applied. So 
So I'm trying to move as quickly as possible before this start to cure. I let this sit for about 10 minutes, which was enough time for the glue to completely set up. In the occasion of a failure, my thinking is you can just use a heat gun, loosen up the hot glue and pop out the charger. Although I don't like the thickness of the felt pad, it's the solution I came up with to close off the lamp. After sanding down the lamp, I then finished it off by putting on a couple coats of wipe on poly. After applying the wipe on poly, the seam between the two boards showed itself a little too much for my liking. To address this, I used a chamfer bit to take off the edge from the thin piece of lumber. Now this looks a whole lot better. So here you have it, a beautiful two-tone desk lamp with built-in wireless charging. And with the base being so thin, no one will guess there's wireless charging built in. With the lamp head being only one inch thick with a strip of LEDs, it's a great multifunction lamp that gives you three different modes of light. Since this is a USB power cord, this means you can power it directly from a PC, a laptop, a mobile charger, or even a power bank. As mentioned, you have three different sources of light. One switch gives you a pure white, the other switch gives you a warm yellow, and with both switch on you get somewhere in the middle. 